Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of the killing of Harambe the gorilla? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Harambe the gorilla was born in Brownsville, Texas on May 27, 1999. He was the property of the Gladys Porter Zoo. In July 2002, his mother, brother, and sister were accidentally killed using chlorine gas. Evidently, a plastic container of chlorine melted after being left near a space heater. Another one of his brothers initially survived the gas, but would later die as well. So Harambe lost four of his family members in one incident. His father died 11 years later of heart disease. In September of 2014, at the age of 15, Harambe was transferred to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. At this point, the western lowland gorilla weighed 419 pounds. Zoo officials hoped that Harambe would father offspring with two female gorillas at the zoo. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On May 28, 2016, one day after Harambe turned 17, a three-year-old boy named Isaiah Dickerson was visiting the Cincinnati Zoo. Isaiah, his three siblings, and his 32-year-old mother, Michelle Gregg, visited the Gorilla World Habitat. This exhibit contained Harambe and two female gorillas. At about 4 p.m., Isaiah said something to his mother about wanting to swim with the gorilla. As Michelle was preoccupied with Isaiah's three siblings, Isaiah climbed over a three-foot fence around the enclosure. Some sources indicate that Isaiah crawled under the fence, but either way, he managed to defeat the barrier. After crawling through four feet of bushes on the other side of the fence, Isaiah dropped 15 feet into the shallow moat in the gorilla world habitat. He made a splashing noise as he entered the moat, which attracted the attention of the gorillas. Concerned for the safety of the boy, officials at the zoo signaled for the three gorillas to move inside. The two female gorillas complied with the command, but Harambe appeared to be curious about Isaiah. He climbed down into the moat to investigate. Harambe appeared to be perplexed by the presence of a fence-penetrating intruder, he interacted with Isaiah in a few different ways, some of which were dangerous. For example, the gorilla grabbed Isaiah, propped him up, pushed him down, and pulled him through the water and over the concrete. The boy's head was banging into the concrete as the gorilla dragged him. Harambe was walking around with his arms and legs extended in an apparent effort to appear bigger. This behavior is referred to as strutting. Onlookers were horrified and gravely concerned for the boy's safety. They were screaming and yelling at the gorilla, which only appeared to aggravate him. Using a ladder in the exhibit, Harambe carried Isaiah out of the moat onto dry land. Zoo officials believed that they had no choice but to kill the gorilla in order to protect Isaiah. They shot Harambe one time, killing him. The entire incident lasted about 10 minutes. Isaiah was rescued by firefighters and taken to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. He was released a short time later. Many people were angry with Isaiah's mother and accused her of being negligent. Other people were mad at the zoo, believing that the barrier should have been more effective or the gorilla should not have been in the zoo in the first place. After an investigation was completed, the prosecutor said that Michelle would not face any charges. She did not act in any way to put Isaiah in harm's way. The zoo was never found liable for anything related to the incident. No lawsuit was ever filed. The controversy surrounding the death of Harambe continued for some time. He became a popular meme, which the Cincinnati Zoo was not pleased with. The incident was the first time the zoo had ever killed an animal during an emergency, and zoo officials were clearly quite upset. Many people were attached to Harambe and knew him quite well. In 2017, 
the Cincinnati Zoo created a new indoor gorilla habitat surrounded by safety glass. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, the group of employees at the Cincinnati Zoo who responded to the incident was called the Dangerous Animal Response Team. I doubt it's a coincidence that the acronym is DART, as a tranquilizer DART would be preferred over lethal force in most situations. Considering that they shot the gorilla with a rifle instead, maybe they should change their name to Rapid Interdiction Force for Lethal Encounters. Item number two, regardless of how the zoo responded to the incident, was Isaiah's mother reckless or negligent? Many people believe that she was, but as I mentioned, the prosecutor declined to press charges. He implied that Michelle's behavior was not even close to being a crime. Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Michelle was reckless or negligent, starting with the factors supporting this theory. Isaiah told his mother that he wanted to swim with the gorilla, therefore she knew that he was thinking about something dangerous. Witnesses said that Michelle was distracted by Isaiah's three siblings. Now moving to the factors supporting the idea that Michelle was not reckless or negligent. It is not unusual for children visiting zoos to make dangerous requests. Children often talk about wanting to touch the animals or to get closer to the animals. Just because children make these requests doesn't mean they can follow through with them. Safety barriers typically prevent contact with zoo animals. A witness reported that Michelle responded to Isaiah's request about swimming with the gorilla by saying, no, you're not. Michelle not only acknowledged his request, she denied it. When trying to manage four children, it is not unusual that a mother would lose track of one of them for a moment. The fence at the Gorilla World Habitat had not been breached since the exhibit opened in 1978. It managed to keep people safely separated from the gorillas for 38 years. A reasonable person would probably believe that a child could not easily defeat this barrier. Once Isaiah was able to get past the fence, there was nothing that Michelle could do to stop him. When considering the evidence, do I think that Michelle was reckless or negligent? No, I do not believe she was responsible for what happened. She did not do anything to assist Isaiah in circumventing the barrier. Rather, she was simply preoccupied with other children when Isaiah acted on his own. If a zoo is too dangerous for a parent to be momentarily distracted, then it is too dangerous for anyone. The design of safety barriers at a zoo should not demand 100% vigilance from parents in order to function correctly. It's possible that Michelle underestimated her son's determination to have contact with the gorilla, but that's not reckless or negligent. I think what really hurt Michelle, as far as her reputation, was how she responded in a way that people considered flippant. For example, on Facebook, she suggested that accidents happen. Michelle did not appear to appreciate the tragedy of a gorilla being killed because of that accident. Item number three, did the Cincinnati Zoo overreact by using deadly force against the gorilla? Let's take a look at the factors both for and against the idea that the zoo overreacted, starting with the factors supporting this idea. There have been two other well-known incidents where children have made their way into zoo exhibits containing gorillas. These incidents did not require lethal force to be resolved. One of the incidents was in Illinois and another in Britain. Both involved a gorilla protecting a boy who entered the exhibit. Harambe the gorilla was referred to as mischievous, but had no history of aggression. Perhaps zoo officials could have approached him calmly and negotiated the boy's release, or they could have used a tranquilizer dart. Now moving to the factors contradicting the idea that the zoo overreacted by shooting and killing the gorilla. Even though Harambe may not have intended to do harm, he did drag the boy through the water and over concrete, which was extremely dangerous. A male gorilla is several times stronger than a man. It can lift up to 4,000 pounds on a bench press. The average human male can bench press around 135 pounds. A gorilla has a bite force of 1,300 pounds per square inch, which is twice that of a lion. It is standard procedure for a zoo to kill an animal who is jeopardizing the life of of a human being. One could argue that the zoo was simply following this procedure. They really had no choice. 
If they did something else, they would have been violating procedure. Jack Hanna, the famous zookeeper, said the zoo made the correct decision in shooting the gorilla. He noted that a tranquilizer dart could have taken five to ten minutes to neutralize the gorilla. Jane Goodall, a well-known primatologist, said that the gorilla appeared to be protecting the boy, but the zoo had no choice but to shoot the gorilla. Just like Jack Hanna, Jane said that a tranquilizer dart would have taken too long to work. Another primatologist went a step further and claimed that the boy's death was a probable outcome if the gorilla was not killed. When considering all the evidence, do I think that the zoo overreacted by killing Harambe the gorilla? No, I think the zoo did what they had to do to protect Isaiah. The situation probably could have been resolved without violence, but the zoo could not take that chance with a human life. There was no way to know for certain that Isaiah would be safe if the gorilla was not shot. Killing the gorilla guaranteed Isaiah's safety. This takes me to item number four. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Isaiah appeared to be particularly determined to see a gorilla up close. He took advantage of his mother being distracted to enter the gorilla enclosure, or his timing was simply just bad luck, like he went to breach the barrier during the time when his mother was distracted, but he wasn't aware that his mother was distracted. Harambe was curious about the interloper, but did not intend to harm Isaiah. Unfortunately, onlookers screamed at the gorilla, which made him feel threatened. He responded by taking the boy to another area of the exhibit, but the trip was dangerous because of the dragging part. Harambe was responding to more stimuli than he could handle, which caused him to appear aggressive. This was frightening to the zoo officials and resulted in the use of lethal force. In my opinion, Harambe the gorilla had a legitimate right to be upset by the way he was treated by human beings. Four of his family members were killed by chlorine gas when he was young. The day after he turned 17, he was trying to protect an intruder from onlookers who were screaming and was killed with a rifle. Many people find time at the zoo to be enjoyable, but Harambe found his time to be lethal. Now moving to my final thoughts. Harambe the gorilla died because a three-year-old boy managed to penetrate a barrier to the gorilla exhibit. This barrier had been effective for 38 years. I think the lesson learned is to never underestimate the determination of human beings. When looking at a three-foot fence, four feet of bushes, and a 15-foot drop into a moat, zoo officials probably thought that no child would ever be able to, or be inclined to, make their way into the exhibit. If they did think this, they were incorrect. Public attractions tend to get polluted with a seemingly endless supply of safety barriers and warning signs that detract from viewing experiences and decrease the quality of visiting. Some of these barriers and signs are, of course, necessary, but many are really just for the very few people who intentionally or unintentionally find a way to create danger in relatively safe situations. Unfortunately, the behavior of a few destroys the view of the many. It creates a gorilla grip on enjoyment. Those are my thoughts on the killing of Harambe the gorilla. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.